Hello and welcome to today's RIMS webinar sponsored by Prudent Insurance Brokers Private Limited. This session is Business Interruption Insurance, Importance and Key Considerations. My name is Justin Smollison, Business Content Manager here at RIMS, the Risk and Insurance Management Society. A few notes before we begin. If you have a question for the presenters during today's session, please submit them by writing in the question box. Feel free to ask at any point in the presentation. We will reserve time at the end for Q&A. And if we do not have time today, uh, the questions will be gathered and the Prudent team will reply to you directly. Following this session, the recording will be available through the on-demand events page of rims.org. And all downloads and contact information will be accessible to the sponsor. Prudent Insurance Brokers Private Limited is the composite broker registered with IRDAI and does not underwrite the risk or act as an insurer. Insurance products are obligations only of the insurance company. Prudence Team offers you a chance to compare the best insurance policies, services offered by various insurance companies, and then by a plan. For more information or details on benefits, exclusions, limitations, terms, and conditions, please read the sales brochure or policy wording of the insurance company carefully before concluding a sale. The upcoming event advertised herewith does not constitute legal advice. No responsibility is taken for changes in laws or regulations which occur subsequent to the date hereof. RIMS is the Risk and Insurance Management Society organizing education and training programs. The trade names or trademarks of the third parties used is solely for the joint event purpose only. We would like to highlight one change in today's program due to certain unforeseen circumstances Mr. Dina Karan is unable to join us as a speaker today. In his place, Mr. Ajit Ora will be covering aspects related to policy coverages. And on with today's presentation, RIMS is thrilled to be joined by a large audience. Our key panelists, sorry, our panelists have decades of experience between them and are here to explore some of the key considerations and challenges in business interruption insurance. Let's welcome our panelists. First up is Mr. Vijay Chaudhary. He is a seasoned insurance professional with over 35 years of experience in the insurance industry. Having good exposure in all the insurance products, he worked on global programs and handled large insurance claims pertaining to infrastructure, power, and telecom companies. He also worked with public and private, uh, sorry, with the public sector and private insurers, Indian and global broking houses, and with corporates like Lanco Group, Barty, and Barty Airtel. For the past seven years, he is working with the leading renewable energy group, Renew Power, as head of insurance. Welcome. And next, we have Mr. Yogesh Gandhi. Yogesh is the MD of the Indian Operations of Proclaim Insurance Surveyors and manages the operations of the organization from Mumbai. Currently handling an array of large BI losses, Yogesh is the preferred loss adjuster for most insurers and reinsurers in the country. He currently gives lectures at various insurance institutes and is known for his ability to find solutions to large BI claims. He has been involved in the infra as well as energy sector and has been instrumental in concluding claims for clients like Zari and Reliance for their various losses, including BI claims. He is considered an institution in the field of valuation within the country and has been associated with projects involving refineries, chemical plants, and hospitality chains such as Trident. Welcome, Mr. Gandhi. Next, we have Mr. Ajit Hora. Ajit comes with over three decades of experience in the general insurance industry. He has had a rich experience as an insurer, having worked for over 15 years with United India Insurance Company and about 20 years of experience as a consultant and broker. He is currently a director and member of the board at Prudent Insurance Brokers Private Limited. One of the finest professionals in business interruption insurance, property damage, as well as construction insurance, Ajit is an all-rounder in the general insurance industry and is highly respected by the clients, insurers, surveyors, as well as competing brokers. And during his career as a professional insurance consultant, Ajit leveraged his strong technical knowledge about risk management, insurance and claims, coupled with equally substantial client presence in creating a name for himself in the general insurance industry in India. And please welcome our moderator, Mr. Vignesh Chandrasekhar. Vignesh is a professionally qualified risk manager with more than a decade of experience in risk management and insurance. He has worked as a risk engineer and underwriter with a leading general insurer before moving into a broking role. 
He has been associated with Prudence since 2021 and helps drive strategy and engagement for large clients as well as consulting initiatives. Mr. Chandra Shaker, my good friend, take it away. Thank you very much, Justin. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to all our participants from across the globe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to this exciting webinar on business interruption insurance. Business interruption is one of the key risks faced by any organization, regardless of industry and size. And in almost all the surveys conducted internationally by various entities, including the World Economic Forum, the risk of business interruption appears near the top. Now, catastrophic losses can wreak havoc upon businesses, and statistics also show that 75% of businesses that suffer major losses do not survive. This is because the resultant business interruption can be in multiples of the damage to property. I'm sure we will all agree that insurance is an important risk management tool that helps organizations to quickly recover from major losses. Now, while business interruption insurance has been around for quite some time, it is still not very popular nor very well understood. Some of the basic doubts or questions that one would have are, do I really need business interruption insurance? What does it cover? Does it cover loss of production, loss of turnover, loss of profits? When does the business interruption policy actually trigger? Is it upon damage to my property only or for any other reason? But what about business interruption due to damages at related parties outside my own premises? How do, do I calculate the sum insured and estimate the correct indemnity period? Are business interruption claims easily assessed? In today's webinar, we will try to answer many of these questions and explain the concept of business interruption insurance in a very simple manner. Our objective today is to demystify business interruption insurance for our audience. Now, before we begin, we would like to conduct a short poll to gauge the interests of our participants. You would momentarily be seeing a poll come up on your screen, and I would request all our attendees to participate in the poll. And once the answers start flowing in, we will share the results of this poll and begin our panel discussion. Now on your screen, you can see a QR code on the left-hand side. So I would request all our participants to scan it using the camera on their mobile phone. And we would want to understand from you, what would you want as a key takeaway from this session? Would you want to understand what are the key considerations to help you determine your sum insured for your business interruption policy? Or would you like to know more on the challenges faced by clients and insurers in BI policies and claims? Or what are the other important clauses under BI insurance? So I would request all the participants to scan the code and provide their inputs. All right, I'll read those questions again one more time while the audience is uh, scanning the code. What would you want as a key takeaway from this session? Would you want key considerations for determining some insured for business interruption, challenges faced by clients and insurers in BI policies and claims, important clauses under BI insurance, or would you want a different takeaway from this session? And if we don't see the numbers uh, rise soon, um, Vignesh, you don't have to worry about the actual numbers. You can just uh, talk about why those are important. Oh, they're coming in. Excellent. Let's give it another five or 10 seconds and then we can move it along.
I think uh, we'll give about five more seconds for the audience to respond to the poll. All right, I think uh, All right, I think uh, give Looks like the second one has the overwhelming majority, right, Vignesh? Second one, challenges faced by clients and insurers in business interruption policies and claims certainly has the overwhelming majority. It's followed closely by uh, or basically a tie between important clauses under BI insurance and key considerations for determining the sum insured for business interruption. All right, Vignesh, back to you. Thank you, Justin. So I think the stage is set uh, for a discussion on a fascinating subject. And uh, let's get the ball rolling and uh, let's start our panel discussion. And we'll start with uh, Mr. Vijay Chaudhary. Uh, so let's start with the question that a lot of our participants from corporates uh, would be interested in, which is why does an organization need a business interruption policy in the first place? Yeah, thanks, Vignesh. Good evening, all. <clears throat> and thanks to RIMS and uh, Prudent for the opportunity to connect with you all. Uh, yes, uh, business interruption is very, very important uh, uh, cover. First of all, as Vignesh uh, mentioned, insurance is one of the best tools uh, to mitigate the risk of any business that we are all aware of it. And uh, generally, we buy uh, property insurance to protect uh, against all the physical risks. Uh, and in case of any property damage, we are going to be indemnified by the insurance insurer. But what about the you know uh, loss of revenue uh, during that period when the property damage is uh, occurred, and uh, we are in the process of uh, reinstating the property, during the period we are going to lose the revenue. It is very, very critical. We can reinstate the property, but how we manage the other costs like, uh, you know, salaries, debt servicing, and other fixed costs. So also the anticipated profit. So during the period of uh, non-functioning of the business. This is very, very, you know, important uh, for any business uh, uh, entity. Okay, for all these questions, business interruption insurance is the best answer. Uh, generally, you know, um, to protect the balance sheet of an organization, uh, business interruption cover is really helps a lot during the interruption of the business due to any uh property damage so loss of revenue impacts the shareholders and the reputational damages and also uh, losing the competitive edge in the uh, business so to take care of all these things actually one should uh, have this uh, business interruption policy in place uh, this covers all the revenue losses during that particular, uh, you know, uh, event in that period. Okay, at times uh, the impact of the business interruption is much, much more than the property damage. So business interruption uh, generally, you know, compensates the uh, lost, whatever the income we are losing during the interruption uh, due to the any accident or any property damage 
and the additional expenses incurred because of the unexpected disruption of the business operations. All these things are covered under uh, business interruption cover, insurance cover. Even though business interruption uh, policy is a uh, separate policy, but the uh, you can't buy this policy without buying the you know property insurance. It's an uh, add-on policy kind of thing. You have to buy the first property insurance, and then only you are able to buy this business interruption uh, policy. And this policy triggers when there is a you know covered event. Uh, 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 event happens uh, due to covered peril, then only this uh, uh, business interruption uh, will trigger. And normally, you know, it uh, compensates the loss of net profit and fixed charges, as well as the increased cost of working. So that's how this, uh, you know, I, I'm uh, uh, very Confidently, I can concretely, I can say that the business interruption is very much required for any business uh, organization uh, to manage uh, their uh, risks uh, as a part of their uh, risk management. Actually, we can talk a lot about uh, this uh, policy, but, uh, you know, we have uh, veterans uh, uh, in the industry to uh, share their insights. So that's from mine, my side. Sure. sure. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing those views. And I think uh, they have helped set a good foundation for us to move you know, uh, further uh, on the topic over here. And next, I'll move to Mr. Ajit Hora. Uh, and uh, so could you shed some light on what are the important points and coverages uh, when it comes to business interruption insurance? Thank you, Ignesh, and a very good afternoon to everyone. So, you know, we'll, we'll start with, see, when you have a property damage, the cost of restoration or restatement, that gets paid under the property damage insurance. But the interruption so caused, you know, it leads to two types of financial losses. One, you stop making your net profits. And two, you continue to incur your fixed costs. Now, the BI policy is designed to specifically cover these two financial losses. And if you, you would find that the BI policy defines gross profits in the same manner. Now, it's, it's important to understand that, you know, the way gross profits are defined in BI policy is not what gross profits are in accounting parlance. Gross profit in a BI policy is defined by two methods. One is called the addition method. The other is called the difference method. By the addition method, in very simple terms, gross profit is equal to net profit before taxes and depreciation, plus all fixed costs or all standing charges, including depreciation. And by the difference method, it says gross profit is equal to total turnover minus all variable expenses. Basically, in accounting parlance, the, the accountants would understand its contribution margin. Now, it's important to understand that the BI policy covers loss of gross profits due to reduction in turnover. It is very important to clarify that this BI policy is not meant to cover loss of production unless it is accompanied by reduction in turnover. So there could be many cases where you have a loss of production but you don't have a loss of turnover, right? It could be because of a robust business continuity plan. It could be because of um, accumulated stocks. But unless there is reduction in turnover, the loss of profits are not covered in your BI policy. So the business interruption policy covers loss of gross profits due to reduction in turnover. And it also covers additional expenses which you may incur to prevent the reduction in turnover. Now, the best part is that this policy encourages you to spend. It encourages, it encourages you to make expenses to prevent or minimize the reduction in turnover. And this is what is called the increased cost of working. So overall, the BI policy covers two things. 
one, loss of gross profits due to reduction in turnover, and two, the increased cost of working, which is the additional expenses you may incur in order to reduce or minimize the impact on gross profits. So this is what we say is covered under your BI policy. Now it's important to understand when does a BI policy actually trigger? Now the BI policy triggers when there is business interruption caused by damage to insured property and the property damage claim for that is admissible under a property damage insurance policy. Now there is a typical material damage proviso under all the BI policies. This policy states two things. One, that for a BI claim, you ought to have a valid property damage insurance for the property which got damaged and caused business interruption. And two, the property damage claim under the BI, under the property damage insurance should be admissible. These are the two things which are covered. Now, you know, BI policy could also trigger without damage to your own property, but interruption being caused because of damage to property outside your premises at related parties like your customers, like your suppliers, like your utility providers. You would have heard of customers extension, suppliers extension, public, public utility extension, denial of access, prevention of access. Now, these are all called contingent business interruption covers. And these, these are covered even without property damage at your own premise, but with property damage at premises of your related parties. Finally, depending on the property damage insurance you have, business interruption could be caused by property damage, which itself is caused by external perils, in which case it is called FLOP. And if the interruption is caused by a breakdown, that is internal perils, it is called MBLOP. So that's a bit from me, uh, Vignesh, on the basic aspects of business interruption insurance. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I think those are some very important points that you have covered, uh, especially on contingent business interruption and uh, machinery loss of profit. And, uh, you know, moving on, when, we, when it comes to any insurance policy, one aspect which is very crucial is the sum insured value. And it is critical that adequate sum insured be taken to cover the risk. However, uh, in BI, there is another important aspect too, which is called the indemnity period. So, Mr. Hora, uh, what are your thoughts on sum insured and indemnity period uh, when a client is looking at taking business interruption insurance? Vignesh, you, you hit the nail. In fact, the most important aspects of buying a good BI insurance are indemnity period and sum insured. So, let's cover both of them one by one. See, indemnity period in very simple terms is the time period during which your business results are affected. It commences from the date of damage and it ends on the day on which your business results cease to be affected. Now, this indemnity period may or may not be equal to the reinstatement period. There are many cases where the indemnity period could actually be far higher than the reinstatement period. Now, while the concept of indemnity period may appear to be very simple, arriving or estimating the adequate indemnity period is one of the most challenging tasks. Now, all businesses have what you call a business continuity plan and maybe a disaster recovery plan. These two documents could be really good starting points because they give you a real good clues. But the most important aspect here is when you estimate the indemnity period, you must be looking at the worst case scenario of a property damage. So in case of a worst case scenario of property damage, how much time will you take to reinstate and come back to normal operations? Now, a few key considerations which should be taken into account, I mean, this could not be exhaustive, 
But a few very key considerations are, one, if you know that your restoration is going to include imported plant and machinery, you must have a margin for that. Second, if you know that your restoration has some customized plant and machinery for which there could be lead time from suppliers, you need to take account of that. You need to take account of the time you may need for demolition and removal of debris. You need to take account of the time you may need to seek fresh permissions from the local authorities to start work for restoration. You need to take into account the location of your plant and see the restrictions of the local authorities or the traffic restrictions to see whether you would be allowed to work 24 hours. You need to also take into account the fact whether your business results will continue to be affected even after reinstatement is complete. Among the best example is the hotel industry. In a hotel industry, once the reinstatement is over, they take a long time to reach the occupancy levels which they had prior to the accident. So there, this list is not exhaustive, but these are some of the key considerations. Now, the important point to remember is if you have inadequate indemnity period, you will end up retaining a large part of the loss. So you will continue to lose your gross, pro gross profits, but the insurance company will stop paying. So this is briefly about the indemnity period. Coming to sum insured. Sum insured normally is the estimated annual gross profits if your indemnity period is 12 months or less. In case you want an indemnity period of more than 12 months, this annual gross profits are proportionately increased. Say for instance, you want a one and a half month, uh, sorry, 18 months indemnity period, it'll be one and, a half, one and a half times of annual gross profit. If it's 24 months, it'll be two times the annual gross profits. Now we discussed what are the what are gross profits by both the methods. Whichever method we adopt, it's important to look at the semi-variable or the semi-variable costs. And normally you may not know what is the proportion of fixed or variable. It's always important to make some assumptions, document them, and keep a backup of how you calculated the gross profits. If possible, share this with the insurers because if you share it, life becomes very easy in the event of a claim. But the most important part is when you are estimating the gross profits, mm -hmm. which period are you looking at? As an example, if you were buying a policy for the period 1st of January 2024 to the 31st of December 2024, ideally, you should be estimating the annual profits of the following year. That is 1st January 2025 to the 31st of December 2025. And you must ask me why. Imagine a loss taking place in December, that is the last month or the last week of December. I mean, in such a case, the gross profits to be affected will be of the next year, not this year. And if you are a growing concern, and if you have not accounted for the growth and the next year's gross profits, you will end up with gross under insurance. So when you are estimating gross profits, always take the best case scenario. When you're looking at the indemnity period, take the worst case scenario. And when you're taking the sum insured, take the best case scenario. The best part is the policy provides for refund of premium. After the expiry of the policy, if the sum insured which you have declared or estimated is more than the actual gross profits during the policy period, all you have to do is submit a charter, submit a charter accountant certificate and you get full refund of the premium at the rate which you pay. That's been covering the indemnity period briefly and some in short. Thank you, Vitesh. <clears throat> Thank you very much, sir. I think you've covered a lot of uh, points and uh, I learned a couple of things which I wasn't aware of earlier. So, uh, thank you. And I think these points will be well noted by our own. audience to consider in the, uh, while it is certainly important to face for these values. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, uh, we would be interested to know your perspective uh, as a corporate insurance manager uh, when it comes
I think Vignesh gone out of uh, network. Yeah, you Vignesh can you can on. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you can. Uh, sorry, oh, Vignesh will join. I think I have some technical glitch over here. Yeah. Hello. Uh, okay. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, apologies to everyone. I think there's some uh, technical glitch here. So uh, I think uh, Vijay sir, over to you. Yeah, this is uh, not right. Actually, you know, after uh, Mr. Rajit uh, talked about uh, you know some insured and uh, indemnity period, you are asking a question. I don't know, um, you know, what to say because uh, uh, he's an uh, you know expert and. Uh, we are taking his advices uh, to take care of our uh, race, and you are asking, you know, me to talk after his, uh, you know, views. I what more views I can really, you know, whatever I am thinking, he's already talking about the same thing. So I don't think I can add uh, really much uh, here. But still, you know, uh, as uh, Mr. Rajit mentioned, uh, it is very very important that. Uh, uh, you know, choose the right sum insured as well as the right indemnity period uh, to, uh, you know, protect your uh, uh, business. And that is very, very important. And, uh, you know, uh, most of the organizations really struggle uh, to uh, arrive the sum insured as well as the indemnity period. As uh, Mr. Rajit mentioned, uh, we have to consider all those factors, uh, you know, uh, what is the uh, uh, actual uh, loss you are anticipating and uh, what is that, uh, you know, um, in case of any eventuality, you have to consider that the worst case scenario and uh, you have to, you know, I, I advise, you know, the, or uh, my opinion, I can say that uh, you can consider the sum insured, uh, uh, you know, at least 110% of your uh, estimated gross profits so that uh, you can get refund. You know, um, if at all you are uh, uh, at the end of the year, your profits uh, or your gross profit or whatever uh, you have considered uh, to insure is higher than or, uh, you know, lower uh, side, then you can get refund. You can provide the uh, uh, actual uh, gross profit to the insurer and you can get the <clears throat> refund of your uh, premiums. That's what uh, Ajit uh, 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 mentioned, and I'm, I'm uh, uh, also in the same opinion. And, uh, you know, one more thing, you know, you may have uh, most of, uh, 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 most of the clients have multiple units and uh, uh, properties, uh, and the loss may be in one uh, unit or one department. So that, uh, particular uh, time it may impact on other uh, you know units uh, also the profitability of other units also uh, sometimes so considering that uh, you need to uh, have this uh, uh, you know uh, in your mind that you have to have the interdependency clause also uh, in that uh, in your policy so that it will help uh, in managing the uh, uh, losses uh, due to um, one unit and uh, the losses, uh, the impact on other units also. So maybe it is not uh, that uh, right uh, thing, but the uh, departmental clause also is very, very important here to keep in your uh, policies because, uh, you know, uh, at the time of loss, it helps a lot uh, to, um, uh, particularly when the uh, your policy excess, so that that will be taken care, uh, you know, in a better way when you have a departmental class in your policy. And uh, uh, I think uh, that's all I can I can say. You know, uh, whatever uh, uh, Mr. Ajit uh, mentioned, he covered almost all the points. That's all from my side. Sure, sir. I mean, uh, thank you for adding. Some more points uh, to what uh, Mr. Hora had uh, mentioned. And uh, now let's delve into that part of the webinar where we'll be talking about claims. 
and uh, there's no one better to talk on pi claims than mr yogesh gandhi so uh, mr gandhi given your vast experience uh, could you share how a surveyor approaches and looks at bi claims and uh, could you also touch on how under insurance uh, works in bi claims thank you vignesh and everybody on the uh, webinar and i thank the uh, prudent uh, to give us an opportunity to share with you our thoughts on the process that goes into assessment of bi losses as i understand the type of bi losses as you know vary from a maybe from a small value to a multi crore claim depending upon the size and nature of the business and it is many may believe that some companies may not need a business insurance whether a trading or a small organization or the companies which are suffering losses they should not have a business interruption but that's not right any company and any business business enterprise who expects that in the event of a claim or a damage to their property they are expected to suffer a loss even if they are suffering a net loss so in that cases it is obvious that one only needs to weigh their businesses and then decide whether they need business or not the nature of industries largely the claims arise from a continuous process industries there will be large claims and many claims but there will be obviously many other businesses which will also which can also result into the losses the type and different nature of losses as ajit ji has rightly explained that conventionally the basic policy covers a loss arising from damage to the insured property that is a basic policy now basic policy now is available with various add-ons and many of these add-ons provide you a business interruption cover be uh, without even damaging your own property which is customer supplier extension extension for the public utility or denial of access etc etc and there are many so uh, we must appreciate that even if one feels that their own plant or a business is reasonably safe from a business interruption or a loss there could be circumstances extraneous to your business which may which may lead to uh, loss to your business this is one part of coverage which already my earlier predecessor has already covered now as vignesh uh, uh, wants to know more on a from survey point of view rightly so i consider that the uh, bi policy is a very defined policy compared to any other property policy even i would say because it has given you a clear steps how to work out a claim so it has four or five steps which one needs to establish the first is the interruption period obviously there could be difficulties but by and large it should be simple as it starts from the day the occurrence has occurred and it ends on a day when the business restarts or business gets normalized to a pre existing situation so that becomes an interruption period then the another important aspect and the most important aspect is the standard so what is the standard with which the insured is expecting to claim because the period of interruption he has no business so he cannot say whether it is x y and z so obviously it has to be compared with some period some data some base and that is the period which one needs to establish that what is the standard period and what is the standard turnover or a standard output that he would like to take the base which closely represents or would represent the situation at the time of interruption so that becomes the second step then becomes the third step to work it out the loss of production or output now this is a this is also a very crucial stage because during the process of interruption the policy expects insured to find out and explore or possibility to minimize the loss so this does not mean that you minimize the loss just by expediting your repair that is one aspect that you expedite your repair at extra cost additional cost etc but maybe your business is in such a processes that you can minimize the loss in a various different ways let's say for an example of a simple textile mill which is a composite mill having a spinning unit and a weaving unit now if you have a fire in a weaving unit 
you can minimize the loss by continued spinning and selling the yarn in the market. If it is other way around, let's say spinning unit at a fire, then you can buy the spin, buy the yarn from the market, continue your uh, weaving department and earn the gross profit and sell something on the minimization. So these could be the various possibilities that one needs to examine or get it manufactured somewhere else if it is at a lower cost, the part material or a, a WIP in, a, in between process if you have any. So these are the areas that one needs to examine for arising, for understanding that uh, what minimization of loss you can do. Then the third thing is once you have arrived at a loss or a, once you arrive at a assessment of what is the loss of turnover, the next is the gross profit. Then what is the gross profit rate which should be applied to the loss of turnover? And that is, of course, depends upon your financials and the correct period what you should select with the due adjustment, whatever is required on that. And last could be the adjustment as per the policy terms and condition, which could be under insurance, which could be deductible or any other. And that should give you a, a clear an output from a or by the processes that what should be a correct or a fairly reasonable loss of gross profit arising out of an, in, uh, of an insurance. Now, one of the important aspects which comes from the colleagues which talked earlier and gave an impact or gave the importance of some insured. See, uh, so as all of us know, whether it is a property policy or a BI policy, under insurance is a damage. Because you cannot, because of the under insurance, if you have, you cannot cover the entire loss. So it is important that one is not under insured. But in a business interruption policy, there is one more important factor compared to property damage. And what is that? In a property damage, the under insurance as a deductible is applied on a net loss arrived after the under insurance, if any. So even if there is an under insurance, a deductible is applied, it is on a reduced value of your loss. So your deductible is reduced compared to your gross loss. Had you had a gross loss of 100 rupees and say 5% is deductible, it is 5 rupees. But if it is 30% under insurance, then 70 rupees is your net loss and obviously 5% will be 3.5 rupees. So you have a reduced deductible impact. While in business interruption, it doesn't work like that. In business interruption, under insurance is applied on a whatever loss that is assessed. So you get a balance amount. But the as per the policy, it is defined in terms of number of days and the standard gross profit for those many days. So standard gross profit means the gross loss what you have received before under insurance. So you the under insurance get applied on a full value of your loss. So in fact, it's a double loss as far as the insured is concerned, if the under insurance is not taken care of. And that is why I think most my predecessor has given a very valid and important uh, uh, importance to taking a sum insured adequately or even over insured and then take the refund if it is uh, required to be done. I think that uh, gives a clear uh, a reasonable idea how the BI claim process works and what is to be exam what is to be done uh, for such claims. Very nice. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for those valuable insights into both the BI claims as well as the importance of uh, things like under insurance. And uh, I would like to come back to uh, Mr. Rajit Thora here. Uh, so we all would agree that claims and insurance coverages and add-ons are closely linked. Uh, what are some of the important clauses and coverages uh, when it comes to BI? I know you touched upon uh, you know the increased cost of working uh, earlier. Are there any other clauses that you feel are important and how do they impact the BI claim? Oh, thank you, Vignesh. Thank you. So see, uh, while there are many clauses under uh, business interruption insurance, uh, one of the two, three key clauses which I would want to discuss would be First one is the departmental clause, which Vijay Chaudhary also touched upon. See, uh, departmental clause basically says that if you are conducting business in departments or divisions, the independent trading results of which are ascertainable. Why I'm, why I'm stressing on this is, see, the, the policy wordings are so good. They are talking of trading results being ascertainable 
and not ascertained. So if the trading results of the division or department are ascertainable, then the BI loss could be assessed for that particular department, both for the loss of uh, reduction, uh, loss of turnover and for the additional expenses incurred. Now the best and the biggest impact of this is on the excess. Now the policy defines excess as say a few days of standard gross profit. Say it's seven days or a 14 days of standard gross profit. Now, if you are able to define a department or a division, then the excess is standard gross profit for that department and not for the entire industry. So you get a very good advantage in the sense that your deductible is reasonably applied. So department clause is one of the most important clauses. And while lodging any BI claim, I would encourage the clients to look very closely and spend some time in seeing whether you could limit this entire loss to a particular department or division, the trading results of which you could clearly say that, yes, we can ascertain them. Right. Next important clause is what I call the additional increased cost of working. Now, the increased cost of working we discussed is part of the policy. It basically says that additional expenses incurred solely for the purpose of minimizing or reducing the impact on turnover, you can claim them, but there is an economic condition to the increased cost of working. This economic condition says that you can spend only less than what you save. So you can claim the increased cost of working only if your expenses are less than the gross profits you save. The moment you say you've spent more, the insurance company doesn't pay for it. But there could be situations where in order to maintain your market share, in order to maintain the market, in order to supply to your customers, you may be willing to spend more than what you save. This is what gets covered in your additional increased cost of working and is not covered under your increased cost of working. And last, one more clause which I would want to stress is the average clause. Mr. Gandhi covered this pretty well. See, the, the average clause in BI becomes very important because there is no waiver of underinsurance in BI as you have in property damage. So if you don't take the values well, you suffer underinsurance grossly. And as Mr. Gandhi explained, there is a double whammy. One, your loss gets reduced substantially. And two, the deductible is applied on the gross loss prior to underinsurance. It's a double whammy and the losses get reduced drastically. So it's important to ensure, again, I'll repeat, to arrive at the sum insured very, very properly. There are other clauses like the accumulated stock clause, new business clause, professional accountant clause, aggravation clause. But yes, they, they normally don't come into the picture. These three clauses which I talked about normally would come almost in each and every claim. Thank you. This is this is from me, uh, Vignesh. Thank you very much, sir. I think the uh, to me and I'm sure to a lot of people in the audience, this is a subject that is extremely interesting. And, you know, we can go on for hours and hours on this topic and it may still not be enough. However, we do have, you know, a time constraint uh, in today's webinar. And uh, we have we have seen that there are some questions uh, that the audience has. So uh, we will move on to the Q&A part of uh, today's session. So I would request... Uh, those of you in the audience who have not put your questions in yet, uh, please do. Uh, there is a Q&A section you can see in the uh, bottom middle part of the Zoom app. So please do put your questions in and uh, we'll take the questions up from there. And uh, we'd like to give a minute or two for uh, those of you who have not put your questions in. Please do. And uh, we'll move into the Q&A uh, in two minutes time. We're getting some questions in right now, uh, Vignesh. Do you think that you might want to kick it off and maybe some more will, will file in? Right. Sure, Justin. Mm 
You got the one in the chat that I sent to you. Go right ahead. Yeah. yeah. Evolution. Give a minute. An individual oh. or an organization has a tendency to be driven by challenges. Challenges that have an inherent element of uncertainty. There are events that become the turning points of global economies, and only the fittest ones survive, pre to post such events. And now, even before economies could recover from the pandemic, a geopolitical event has taken place. Studies have shown a steady increase in volume and complexities of risks, higher than ever before. The world is now a global village. We're so fundamentally connected that the impact of regional disasters can no longer be contained locally. The emergence of a different operating reality has caught the incumbent executives and directors unaware. The challenges ahead of them is to manage the downside of the risk better so that they can maximize the upside and hence be future ready. But these are the challenges that most of them have never faced before in their careers. At Prudent, we not only understand the world of risks, but also your business. We understand all the scenarios, know how to assess them, can prepare you for them, and help you control risks. We see it as part of our responsibility. Effective for traditional to new age, mid to large corporations, think of us as your trusted partner that mobilizes specialists in every field to make your risks manageable. For more information on customized solutions for your organization, log on to www.prudentbrokers.com. So I, I think that uh, one minute uh, gave a lot of uh, questions that have come in. So uh, we'll try to take them one by one in the nine minutes that we have left. So uh, one of the questions is, uh, there are many blind spots for organizations while managing a BI policy and claims in it. And one aspect is monitoring the adequacy of some insured uh, during the policy period. So uh, the concern is that if the organization finds out that they have exhausted the sum insured in the middle of the policy, uh, what are some of the best practices to uh, address such situations? And uh, I think uh, Ajit Thora, sir, uh, would you want to take this uh, question? Oh, yes. Thank you, Vignesh. I mean, uh, whosoever raised this question is extremely important question. And uh, I believe I should have covered this when I was talking about some insured. But yes, in a dynamic world, uh, there can be situations where during the year, because of certain changes, because of certain windfalls, you find that your gross profits are very high. The policy allows you for midterm increase of some insured. So whenever you reach a stage where you believe that the sum insured which you've taken is inadequate, you are allowed to increase the sum insured midterm. There are two provisions in this. If you pay the premium from day one for the entire year, you retain your premium refund clause. And if you want to pay only pro rata premium from the date you want to increase till the expiry of the policy, you are allowed to pay pro rata also, but in that case, you lose the premium refund clause. So any of these, depending on the situation you could take, but yes, you've raised a very valid point. Policy allows for midterm increase of some insured. Please do opt for it. Get in touch with your insurer or your broker. It can be done very easily. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question says, uh, if for example, in the past year, uh, a particular company has had a lot of disturbances uh, or incidents uh, which are not covered under a policy. Uh, how does one arrive at a standard turnover? Uh, Ajit sir or uh, Yogesh sir, would you want to take this question? I will take this. Yeah, see, irrespective of the operation in the previous year where you have made instances which are not related to the policy, still you work, one needs to work it out a fair and a reasonable period in the previous year when the business was fairly stable. In an extremely, in an extremely difficult situation to take the previous period, I believe, maybe my personal view, but I believe even the post-incident, also you can take it as a standard if there are no major changes affected in the post-interruption period. 
So it is a matter of establishing what is a real fair and standard. That is all. Well, I hope it clears to some extent. Yes, yes. Right. Thank you. Sir. I think uh, uh, I can add uh, here. Sorry. <clears throat> You know, sometimes what happens if the plant is get commissioned uh, uh, a month back and uh, there is a, you know, major uh, property damage. So in those uh, cases, I believe, as Mr. Uh, Yogesh ji uh, mentioned, you can consider the, you know, post loss trends also for the, you know, uh, uh, Assess the loss. That's what I I believe. Uh, what do you say, Mr. Gandhi? You are right, you... sir. That is that is what that is what I said. Yes. Mm. Yes, Vikram. Right, sir. Uh, another question is, sir, uh, how important is it for a client or corporate uh, who has suffered a loss to monitor various items and aspects? after the date of damage till reinstatement is uh, completed yeah i think i can take this uh, you know basically one should uh, the client must uh, be aware of uh, what he has covered what is the policy what he bought you know the scope of coverage and the he, he must uh, be aware of the interpretation of the wordings of the policy uh, all these things, uh, he has to be well aware of it. If he is not able to, he has to take a expert advice. And um, uh, he must uh, be aware that uh, the delays, administrative delays or uh, unexplainable delays are not covered under this policy. So, uh, and one should uh, maintain the proper record of the daily work done uh, to reinstate so that it will help uh, the client to explain the surveyors uh, at the time of assessment. Otherwise, you know, surveyors generally comes up with uh, uh, a query that, uh, you know, this work can be done uh, in 10 days, but you took 20 days. What is the, you know, then they, they may detect that 10 days. So you must be in a position that, you know, that why you you have taken that 20 days sometimes it may be you know nature may not support you there there is a uh, you know uh, rainy season and heavy rains for a week or so your work gets delayed so all these uh, things you have to record properly so that it helps you to uh, you know uh, explain uh, these things to the surveyor at the time of assessment so that you may not lose the days uh, uh, you know, they, they may not uh, deduct uh, too many days from your, you know, claim. So that is a very important aspect, I believe. Yeah. Uh... Right, sir. <clears throat> right, sir. I mean, thank you very much uh, for sharing your views also on this. And uh, I think uh, in the interest of time, uh, we would be uh, concluding the webinar here. Of course, uh, rest assured, those of you who have shared in more questions. Uh, we'll be reaching out to you with answers to your questions uh, post the webinar. And I think we all would agree that it has been an insightful and informative session. And uh, I would like to thank our panelists today for sharing their experience and knowledge with us. I'm sure our participants have gained new insights on this fascinating subject of business interruption insurance. And for our audience, uh, for any queries, uh, please reach out to us on consulting at uh, prudentbrokers.com. And uh, thank you very much. That's it from my side. Uh, Justin, uh, back to you to conclude the webinar. All right. That was great. Rims would like to thank Mr. Vijay Chaudhary, Aj Mr. Rajit Hora, Mr. Yogesh Gandhi, and my good friend, Mr. Vignesh Chandrasekhar for their time and expertise. A copy of this webinar will be available through the on-demand events page of rims.org within a few business days and on prudentbrokers.com. For more information, visit prudentbrokers.com, like Vignesh said, and follow Prudent on LinkedIn. Finally, RIMS is so thrilled to announce that Risk World 2024 will be held in San Diego, California, May 5th through May 8th, 
2024. Public registration will open on December 6th. So get your passports and travel visas ready now. Visit rims.org slash events to register. And RIMS is global. We'd love for you to build your network with us. Visit rims.org slash membership to apply for a RIMS membership. It's great to see you all again. Thank you all and stay safe.